Hey everyone, in this video I will show you how I installed these underwater fish lights from underwaterfishlight.com. They have a retail store in Port Charlotte, Florida. I was in there, Derek, one of the owners, helped me through the entire process, showed me all the options, how they work, what to expect. I was able to do this installation all by myself. It would be way easier with two people, but you can do it by yourself. I'll show you how I did it. Also, I want you to notice how beautiful this picture is. Aside from bringing the fish in, uh, it lights up the boats, it lights up your whole dock and area, and this is the effect that I got. Here's what it looks like on their website, underwaterfishlight.com. So you might look at a picture like this and think, oh, that's enhanced. It totally isn't. This is exactly what you will get. They sell more than just dock lights. They sell these lights that hang down uh, under your boat. They run off 12 volt. And as I mentioned, after about 30 days, and I'll take you through the whole process from about three days in the water all the way to 30 days in the water when the snook finally came in, and I just couldn't be happier. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. It's a pretty long video, but I show you everything. So stay tuned. We're in Port Charlotte, Florida, and I'm at underwaterfishlights.com. You can see they've got a, a building here. They've got some vehicles that are wrapped. Got one right here, one here behind me, wrapped van. And what they do here is make uh, underwater fish lights, if the name didn't give it away. We're going to put some fish lights uh, in the dock. I think I'm going to go with a two light system. I haven't fully decided, but Derek and his dad started this business right here. They have obviously a website, uh, they ship everywhere. My neighbor has this system and I just thought it was amazing. So I drove up here to check it out. Uh, we're gonna go inside, see their showroom, get some fun facts about the units uh, and the choices and, and options that they have. Also some of the construction, they do everything right here, right on site. Uh, we're gonna buy a system and then I'm going to uh, take it home and I'll do an unboxing. I'll show you everything about the installation. We'll put them in the water and see how it works. Stay tuned. All right, here we go. Here's what to expect. You come in, they've got some art on the wall. Look at these photos of the effect of these lights. Here's an example of what it looks like underwater. We'll make our way right in here and you can see we've got showroom. Again, with their equipment on a pretty nice looking dock, actually. And here we have Derek. How you doing? All right, along with Derek, we've got some staff to handle customer service, internet, uh, pretty much anything you need. You can just come right in and they'll tell you all about the system. Oh, I see you got some fishing lures here. I might have to, uh-oh, might be spending some more money. But let's uh, get Derek to show us specifically uh, the unit that I'm going to, decide here on and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are, Derek. Uh, I'm, I'm really actually gonna make the decision uh, right now. So uh, so let's learn about this single unit system and I'm, I'm just gonna ask some questions, kind of forget you're there a little bit. So let's do it. All right, so basically, where are you located? Cape Coral, Florida. Cape Coral, okay. So now the, it's really dark. There you go. So the water there is fairly murky, so you're gonna want something that kind of is a little bit brighter than the average system. Okay. Um, this system right here is our regular 175 watt system. This has been our original system for the past 17 years. Throughout those years, we've kind of fine tuned our product a little bit. So we came up with a newer system that's a 250 watt, and that's been the brightest system that we found necessary. We have experimented with some other brighter systems, and those are just kind of overkill. Mm -hmm. um, so the 250 watt system is going to be your best bet. But let me give you a rundown on the system and how it actually operates. Okay, great. So the system plugs into a regular 110 outlet, just like this right here. So you're going to plug it into an outlet, and then the power goes through a GFI. The GFI is a safety mechanism in order, and it shuts down the system if it ever breaks, or if the light bulb ever breaks, or you ever have an issue with it. It's Does a, it make any difference if this is already a GFI? It doesn't. We actually uh, re pretty much require it to be because it's double protection. Yeah, all a GFI. lot of electricians, well, it's kind of a controversial subject for some electricians, but we found out over our years that plugging it into a GFI with a GFI is gonna be your best bet. Double safe. Double safe. So from here, it goes through the cable, which is nine feet long from here to here. 
and then it goes up into the control box directly to a photo sensor. The photo sensor makes the system come on automatically every night, then shuts off in the morning. Two reasons that we use it. The main reason for that photo sensor is it gives the light bulb a chance to clean itself. So the light bulb is fully self-cleaning mm -hmm. as long as the light bulb comes on every night. So that's why we use the photo sensor. Now the other reason, and my favorite reason for the photo sensor, is it gives the fish a feeding cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, behind your house, you're kind of tucked up in that canal a little ways. Mm -hmm. um, so the fish aren't going to always be up there. Mm -hmm. But once this light goes in the water, you're going to end up seeing more and more fish on a nightly basis because more fish are going to find this. Because what this light is actually doing is it's creating a food cycle for those fish. Mm -hmm. They're going to be coming to your house every night anticipating the bait fish being there. Mm -hmm. Now, the light actually attracts phytoplankton, little mm -hmm. tiny mechanisms in the water, mm -hmm. which bring in the bait fish, okay. such as um, greenbacks, thread fins, different mm -hmm. things like that. And then you'll get the snook and the tarpon. They work great for freshwater too. Mm -hmm. um, on some of the lakes up north and everything like that. You get a lot of crappie fishermen doing stuff like that as well. Uh, from that photo sensor, it goes to a transformer. This right here is a one light system. We do have the two light system that you were looking at. We have a three and a four light system available as well. But this here is a one light system. There's one transformer in there, which goes out to a 50 foot cable of all underwater rated wire, which goes out to a five pound dive weight. That five pound dive weight is gonna secure that light bulb down to the bottom and it's gonna keep that light bulb buoyant in the water because the light bulb is actually buoyant like a helium balloon. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be floating upwards and that weight is gonna hold it securely down to the bottom. Now, how deep is your water behind your house? It's about four feet at, at high tide. Okay, so four feet at high tide is pretty shallow. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna to wanna to keep that light bulb really tight down to the- uh, Just like this Just one like is. the one that's set up okay. down here. And that's just zip ties that are holding it on? Yes, mm -hmm. yep, the zip ties, that's the best thing that we can find over the years because mm -hmm. During the daytime, sometimes it, or, uh, with the sunlight hitting zip ties, it can cause them to dry rot. Like, I don't know if you ever noticed that around yeah, the house. I have noticed that. So, but when they're under the water, the water like preserves them because the phone is not, or the, uh, um, the sun's not beating down on them, the water is actually like preserving them. Mm -hmm. So that's the main reason that we use the cable ties. They're the easiest to work with and customer friendly. Now, any excess cable just tie up just like you have it here? Yes. Okay. So sometimes in docks, they're, every dock is different, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they come standard with 50 foot cables. You can get all the way up to 150 foot cable if need be. Okay. But the 50 foot comes standard with all of our systems, which typically is mostly Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you do have extra, just coil it up out of the water. Um, you don't want to just throw it in the water. You want to keep it tucked up on your dock somewhere, um, attach it up here, wherever is convenient. Um, and then, yeah. Probably get up there and just even attach it right up under so you just yeah, don't even you see it. You could do it that all. too. Um, yeah, nice and go one. right up underneath one of the trusses. That way, there you don't see it while you're down there. Now, do, when I run this down, uh, do I need to be worried about any? Any barnacles that could be here? Do I want to just attach it where the water line is and then let it hang? Yes. So basically, what I like doing personally is if you can attach it to something, so that way there, because uh, you're going to get a cluster of barnacles. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen them sometimes double the size of the family. So if this wire is hitting waves, chafing on mm -hmm. that cable, it could potentially cut that cable. Mm -hmm. So basically, you want to make sure wherever that cable is going down into the water, you're not going to be having that chafing issue. So if there's no risk of it getting snagged on anything, maybe even a drop down back here yes. would be you better. Do that as well. Okay. Yep. All right, that's giving me some ideas. Good. So. Okay, so um, because I have two boats back there, mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to want to do that two light system. Okay. Um, I'm a little concerned about the cost in running two lights all night, every night. Uh, I know you guys have some information on that. You know, yes. What can I expect? So basically, with the lights, um, throughout the years of experience, we've gotten that question a lot. I bet. So <laughs> the biggest thing is uh, we did some research with Florida Power and Light. We're in Florida, so we contacted mm -hmm. them, and they have a yes. sheet that shows you exactly how much power consumption that you're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times, people think about LEDs as well. Uh, because they're more energy efficient. The problem with LEDs is they don't give off the heat to burn off the barnacles. Mm -hmm. That's a crucial factor because if you put an LED in the water, you're going to have barnacles growing on it in a matter of weeks mm -hmm. and you'll have to pull it up and clean it. But what we came up with with FPNL, we found out if each light bulb is three to four dollars a month added on to your power bill. So you're looking at that two light system. So mm -hmm. you, the most you're going to be looking at is about eight dollars a month added on to your power okay. bill. Oh, that's that's good. That's which, reassuring. Yeah. 
that, that's that's worth the uh, worth the beauty. Worth the uh, backyard aquarium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, um, I also noticed how much light emits up. Like my neighbor's got the whole bottom of his boat is lit up. It's really pretty. Uh, is there any? Um, uh, positioning or that would, that would be a problem putting it up under a boat? No. The only thing is um, you want to be cautious of your deck because okay. if you have four feet and you put that light bulb on the bottom, it's going to be coming up about eight, nine, ten inches mm -hmm. off the bottom because that, that weight's probably going to sink down a few inches into the muck. So you probably got eight inches, eight to ten inches of bulb exposed from the bottom of your canal floor. So if you have a big boat that goes over the top of it, it could potentially crush it. Like really mindful not to bump it or touch yes. it in any way. So typically, the other thing that I recommend is if you can go out a little ways away from your dock mm -hmm. to get it in that six foot of depth of water. Because if you got six feet behind your house, you can pretty much drive over top of that light bulb with any boat that you have. Okay. All right. Good. Good advice. Um, so if I do the two lights, so this is the single light. Yep. I see that has two on the bottom. Yes. Would that be the one that I would need to mount? So that one right there is our 175 watt system. That's a okay. great system. That's what we started this company on. And um, it's a fantastic system. But for Cape Coral, you have that murky water. So I'm gonna try and get you to go with the brighter system, okay. which would be that size control box right there. It's a little bit bigger, okay. but the transformers are larger, so you need a larger box. And they also do have a ventilation cap on top and a fan inside to cool everything down because the boxes do generate a little bit of heat. Okay. Um, so it would look just like that. It yes. would just have, uh, instead of the three outlets on the left there, it would just have the two. two. Mm -hmm. And um, I did want to get a little view. So they all have, oh, I see that has like four of these little screens. Yes. This one has just one. Just one. Yep. The yep. bigger the box, the bigger the, the box, more more screens. Okay. Yep. Are those stainless screens? Yes. So they're going to Everything is stainless. Uh, we have a three year warranty on everything. Okay. Um, we're the only company out there giving a three year warranty. So um, that's definitely one of the things that does make us shine with being in business for that period of time. We're able to tried and true, so to speak. Um, we know what works, we know what doesn't work, and we stick with what works. And what is that, so I noticed that this one just has the photo sensor, this one has the vent cap. photo sensor and the vent the cap. Vent cap. Yep. Is there any maintenance on that vent cap? Do I need to clean it or anything? Nothing nope. at all? Okay. Uh, so it's pretty much plug and play, and as long as I see lights every night, there's nothing else to do. Yeah, there's nothing else to do, and if you ever have an issue, our phone number is right there on the front cover of the box. And you can always give us a call, and we have a full tech staff to troubleshoot with you right over the phone. I, I need to pick up a piece of starboard. Yep. Uh, is there any reason why I wouldn't want to go with black? Is there a heat issue, or if There's black not looks better? Um, the only heat issue would be is if you, for some reason, were running that system during the daytime. Um, I know you like the black because it will match your dock probably a little bit better. Um, if you're running the system during the daytime, which you're not going to be because of the photo sensor, then I might say black might be an issue, but it's going to be nighttime when the system comes on. There's going to be no heat issue with the black whatsoever. Okay. So I'm actually pretty handy. Would it uh, cause the system to run more efficiently in any way if I cut the center of the, of the blackout and just mounted so that it had more air to circulate, or no, it's not really going to matter? It's not going to matter. Okay, okay, right. um, we put that fan in there, and... Um, it just keeps it so cool in there. I mean, it's okay. cool to the touch. And it's only going to run at night. I mean, I'm it's not going to run at night. I'm not going to mess with, this, with the system to do that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, okay. So yes, I understand you have uh, the three colors. I did a little research with the higher wattage. Um, and you feel that the the natural green would be the best for my, you know, dark kind of canal water in Cape yes. Coral. Okay. Now, we do have uh, a blue light system, and we also have a vibrant green system. Mm -hmm. Those are our colored light bulbs. Now, with those colored light bulbs, they look amazing, but the life expectancy is only about a year to two years. Mm -hmm. And in your water, since it's so murky, the blue won't look good. It'll actually be like a brown-yellow. It's not okay. going to be appeasing at all. The vibrant green would look very good, but we've seen better results with the natural green for the fish aspect. Okay. So if you're really looking to have a backyard aquarium with having a ton of snug, tarpon, mm -hmm. everything like that, the natural green is definitely the way to go. Plus, you get the longest longevity out of that system. Backyard aquarium. That's, that's it. A, that's, a, <laughs> that's a good one. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So, All right. Well, then let's do the two light system and the natural green 
with the higher wattage bulbs, and um, and I guess and then I'll I'll grab a piece of starboard on the way home and awesome. and get to it. Sounds good. No, no, All right, no, we have it. some late breaking news from Kristen. We can do it together so you feel better. Okay. All right, Great. so so Kristen came over after we did some video and she talked a little bit about some uh, another accessory. It's actually right here. Uh, it's a it's a it's basically like a fuel line. And she, she's gonna talk about that a little bit, but also she has something else that I don't know yet, but she's gotten me so excited about it that I just have to turn the camera back on. So, okay. all right, so tell me about this. All right, so I tell everyone about uh, two accessories. The first one is our wire shield, we call it, and it's like a heavy duty rubber hose-like material. Mm -hmm. And we only offer this out of convenience for you or you know our other customers, and you seem very handy. So by all means, you can do I am handy. Yourself. I'm so, handy. You know I'm handy. A little bit. I'm not telling you you have to get it from us, but what the wire shield does, it elongates the life of the system for two main reasons. The first reason is this we recommend going in the water in the water on the wire that's at least run in the waterway. So mm -hmm. if you have 20 feet in the water, 20 feet would work. If you have, you know, 10 feet, you may want the 15 foot. Some people do the full 15 foot. Up to you. Mm -hmm. But what it's gonna do is any barnacles, aquatic growth, anything in that water is gonna grow and form on this protective hosing, not on your wire. That's a good point. Obviously mm -hmm. elongating the life of that wire. Mm -hmm leaving it more pliable, giving it more years. The second thing is, with fish come fishermen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> I was supposed to answer that. <laughs> um, and all of our customers are going to say, no, I'm not worried about that. I live on the end of a canal. I Which live you just on heard a me do. Yeah. dead yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right I <laughs> live on a private canal, et cetera, et cetera. If you are not on a fully secluded, private, fenced-in lake, the fishermen will find you. I you. promise you. We <laughs> hear it every day. Mm -hmm. um, so it is not bulletproof, but it is your best option for if someone does cast near it, accidentally hook mm -hmm. into it. It's not going to be you. It's not mm -hmm. going to be your neighbor. It's going to be someone in the middle mm -hmm. of the night, mm -hmm. 3 in the morning, that has yeah. no idea, you know, that or you have no idea they're there, they're, it know, will kind of hook into line. this, not your wire. Okay. And I know you and Derek spoke about, you know, the, uh, the GFI and why this is important. And this was designed for our system. So say someone does hook it and nick into your wire. The good thing about this safety mechanism is it's gonna cause your system to trip saying, hey, there's mm, something wrong okay. with your wire. Mm -hmm. um, so if either one of those reasons Mm -hmm. sound like you may need it by all means you yeah, don't have to get yeah, it from us yeah, but do something you can do it yourself if uh you are handy well i'm gonna, get it. I'm gonna so get it. the second accessory i tell everyone about is that starboard yeah i know you guys were talking a little bit about it before um my neighbor's is actually mounted on a piece of wood yes. and i was thinking about that uh but as soon as i walked in here i saw the starboard and i immediately realized that's way better so we used to, you know, go the whole route of pressure treated plywood. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that's going to be durable mm -hmm. out there in the elements. Then we started carrying the starboard again, just out of convenience, because we have a mm -hmm. lot of people who want it to be a one-stop shop. They come here, they get their system, they get whatever other products they want, they get the starboard, and it comes with the screws. You mount the starboard to your poster piling mm -hmm. and the box to the starboard. Um, it does hit, help stabilize the system, even for this unit, which you know may very well easily mount right to the piling itself. Mm -hmm. But it, this still adds the stability, a flat yeah, surface, flat back, it's gonna distribute the weight evenly. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Um, so we do have some people who just get our kit, some people who get other color starboard, some people who use that decking material, pressure to plywood, whatever they find is gonna match their dock the best. Well, that's actually a good tip because I have a lot of this left over. And if that matches your dock, you know, we have people that put the pieces together, creating I think a black. flat surface. Honestly, like I think black, I would round it over with a round over mm -hmm. bit, and black would match the cords. I think yeah. black would be the way to go. But so. it does, those two things do elongate and make your sense. system yeah. last longer. Good deal. Good deal. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so you just saw the, the, the uh, pitch for this, and uh, I, I'm going to do it uh, for two reasons. One. Uh, she's right about the fishing and the other is 
you know, I do have some barnacles here that are growing. You'll see them uh, when we do the installation. Uh, so I'm gonna run this uh, basically from the, the high water line uh, all the way down to the mud and as far over as I can get it. Uh, and, and that should provide me some protection uh, from, from that cord rubbing back and forth. And then of course the, the fishing reality that uh, people are just gonna find the, find the lights and fish them. So that is a very good tip right there. These guys right here. Here, wait, I wanna show you some cool stuff that they have here. So we're gonna hear about these dock blocks here in a second, but here's these piling caps that you saw on my dock uh, when I first started shooting the videos and um, they come in blue and then this bright white color. I was really looking for that 2700K look. Uh, so that's why I switched these out. But here we have these these, are these? these are called our dock blocks, mm -hmm. and basically you can lay them flat on your dock, and the light, you have three LEDs, mm -hmm. one, two, three, and then three on this side, so a total of six LEDs. They're completely solar, fan, uh, solar mm -hmm. so they charge up every night um, or every day, and then they come on automatically at night. And then you can lay them on your dock at different areas. Mm -hmm. And I usually recommend about six feet apart. Mm -hmm. And that right there is going to give you a very good spread. And uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. And then I noticed these. Yep, these are our rope hooks. Well, there you go. So we also do sell these and they hook on to your dock. And so they come in two different sizes. Two different sizes, inch and a half rope and half inch rope. That is so much nicer looking than what I've seen a lot of customers just wrap them. Yes. Uh, so you, you got a stainless steel tight. hook. Yeah, you can do it. Do it tight or I like the little bit of sag in it. It just makes it look more. Uh, what are these back here? So those are our guide lights. So okay. You can basically, um, you know how boat lifts have. Um, oh, yeah, that just slides this right down slides into the... inside your boat lift, completely solar. This is also white or mm -hmm. blue, comes in two different colors. Mm -hmm. uh, this slides down inside your PVC piping to guide your boat on. So at nighttime, you'll be able to see it coming on. And then we also have um, the same concept, but on a flat oh, it base. Mounts. So you could, at nighttime, you could set this on your cleaning station. And be able to ah, see a little portable. That's it. That's pretty clever. So yeah, and then we got some knives, some Danko stuff. Um, have a portable system. So this right here is a portable system. People could take out on their boat with them. Oh, that's and, pretty neat. Uh, yeah, it's got all kinds of little treasures. I've actually seen this mini reef system. That's pretty cool. That'll that's for another video. Uh, but uh, pretty neat stuff. Got a chum chum thing here also pretty neat Whew. all right so here's the box uh, everything you need is in this box I haven't opened the box yet but uh, the only thing that isn't in the box is the two the fuel hose looking thing that they have sliced so you can wrap it around the wire to protect from fishing lines and barnacles uh, that's still in the car this is now down at the dock here, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, take everything out, and rather than install it, I am gonna actually install it over here, right on that piling, right there, under that outlet. That's the outlet that'll power it. I'll put it uh, on the left side of that piling right there. And um, I'm gonna put one light right here under this boat. I'm gonna put the other light right here under this boat. And I'm just going to test it for a couple nights. I'm going to let the power cords just drape all over the dock because I just really want to see what kind of light it throws. Because the other option is that I put it way out here where it's deeper. You know, I put one behind this boat and one behind this boat. Um, the problem is I don't think I, I can't really enjoy it because when we sit or when we look down in the water, this is where we look. I'll give you a broader view. Let's go super wide. There we go. So what I'm thinking is uh, two lights, one under the front of each boat. I think that's going to look really nice. Uh, so let's get the box open, put the lights down on the water, and then uh, we'll just wait until tomorrow. 
I'm sorry, wait until tonight uh, to see what it looks like when it kicks on. I'll show you what's in here. So we've got their brochure, their warranty, four zip ties, some ads for their for the rest of their product, the uh, purchase date, item purchased. So there's all that. I'm just gonna set this in there so that it doesn't blow away. It's a little windy tonight. They've got this uh, foam. Here is one light bulb, one of the light bulbs right there. Here's the other light bulb. So you can see they've expanded the foam just literally right around the packaging. Here's one of the cords. So I'm just gonna carefully set that down. And... And there's the transformer. Kind of a beast. Uh, 250 footers. Uh, this is the um, photo cell. Now, I think the reason why they don't sell this installed is because this is the last thing that you do. When everything's put in, plugged in, you, this it won't run without this. Uh, and that's probably to uh, just prevent you from turning it on until your bulbs are definitely in the water positioned where you want them. So I'm going to just take the rest of this out of the box. I need two hands and I have an outlet right over here I'm going to use. This outlet is switched, uh, but this one isn't. It runs the charger on the boat. I've got an empty one right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in and just position it right here on the dock temporarily so that I can run these wires and uh, kind of guess where I want to stick them. All right, these zip ties are to zip tie the light to the little lead thing. And let me tell you, that little lead thing is freaking heavy. This is pretty darn heavy. So you uh, zip tie the cord to this. And because of what we learned, uh, I'm gonna zip tie it really close, like right in there. I am going to see if there's any instructions on the best way to run the zip tie, I don't know really. Uh, but this is everything laid out. I did have to kind of untangle everything. So you got the two lights with the two cords. This is the 50 foot version, which is total overkill. However, um, you know, I could always shorten it, they did say, uh, you could just pull the panel, take the screws off, shorten the cables. I may do that. I may not do that. I, I haven't decided. Um, the power cord, the zip ties, and the lead things, and that's it. Uh, so I'm going to lean it up against the wall right over there. First thing I'm going to do is tie these zip ties. Unfortunately, the only one that can help me videotape is my wife, and I have not exactly told her uh, about this new fun thing. So. I'm not going to say, hey, come and help me video, uh, but I'll do the best I can here to show you what I'm doing. So here's how I uh, zip tied these, just, you know, side by side. Not too tight that it really pinches, but tight enough that it's not going to wobble around. Um, there is a top and a bottom to this thing. You can see it's angled, and it's really, it's heavy, and this plastic coating is super thick. Uh, so. I'm just gonna go ahead and mount this one, uh, but this one is actually ready to go. Before I put him in the water, let me just give you a view of what this is all about. So this feels like, it's, it's like a plastic, it's very hard plastic. It looks like it's been painted with, with possibly an anti-fouling paint. I'm really not sure, uh, but it definitely looks like it's been painted. Um, it's got a sealed fitting right here. And then this cage is uh, like that glass impregnated plastic. It's not just a cheap plastic. Uh, it's it's um, definitely not metal. You can see how it fits together right here. 
uh, so they snap it together around the bulb. Uh, but it is, uh, it's a very high quality. You can hear it's, it's uh, very, very hard. Uh, it, it reminds me of that glass impregnated plastic, that newer style plastic uh, that they use. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a close up of that. Got a little something here on the cord. It's just a little bit of glue or sealant. Oh yeah, it's just a little, little drip of sealant or something. So that's nothing to be worried about. The cord is extremely flexible soft. Um, you can tell that it's uh, very high quality, rated for, you know, many, many years, so they say, uh, but you really get a feeling of quality when you, when you uh, touch it and bend it. It's very, very, um, you know, uh, pliable. It's not very stiff at all. And then under here, we've got these four vents uh, that go all the way through. And, um, and then this box is just assembled with a top plate and screws all the way around. And then here's your mounting uh, flanges. Those flanges, I'll show you when I install it, are actually uh, bolted in to the back. Here's your uh, air vent, air filter. You can see, if you look carefully underneath, that's been siliconed in. And then here's your outlet for your photo sensor to plug in. And this is just your typical photo sensor that you'd find on, a, on one of the large um, lights in a parking lot. And then here's your GFI test and reset uh, that's connected to your power cord. That's a close up. What do you think? All right, I really applied way too much thought to this. You don't need a boat hook. I put it, you can't see it, but it's basically right exactly in the middle. And all I did was just swing it over there. So you basically just take it. Of course, you don't want to hit anything uh, with it. I'm going to let out quite a bit of slack. And then I want it right about in the middle. So I'm just gonna swing it until it gets just about where I want it and let it down. And it should be right about there. Now, what's great is tonight, I can just pull it up and move it. <laughs> There's really no way to screw this up. I can't actually see it because it's too dark, but, uh, but what I'm shooting for is basically centered up under the boat here and centered up under the boat there. So let's go ahead and stick the uh, photo thing in. I'll go ahead and stick that in. And it only goes in one way. So that photo cell will be facing out. I'll go ahead and plug it in. we're getting so I just tested it and now I reset it and it's not dark enough but I wonder if I can trick it oh I can trick it so there's that one and there's that one you can barely see it this is gonna be cool and you can hear the machine, the fan kicked on and everything. Now take my hand off and it only takes a second to shut off. So I'm not gonna cycle it again because I don't know if that's bad for it. But uh, that's it. So in a little bit, I will come back out here. That by the way, if you're wondering if you saw it, is my uh, little turtle platform. So we got turtles here and they just kind of swim around. So I built that and now they sit on that. I have yet to capture a picture of them, but I did see one, but as soon as I came out here, it jumped off. Uh, all it is is some decking that I tied a rope to. And anyway, till tonight, stay tuned.
All right, I got some fish food from my gumball machine fish food feeder. This is the look. It's not even really dark out, but it already looks super cool. There's um, just a lot of debris in the water, which is annoying tonight. But uh, I did see a couple of the snapper around. So let's go ahead and throw some food in and see what happens up. Oh, there we go. Snapper there. So once you figure out where to mount it, then you need to figure out how to mount it. And if you're mounting it to a wall, then you can just mount it right to the wall. Uh, but I'm mounting it to a piling, so I have to use uh, something to create the flat surface. And I happen to have a spare piece of black starboard that is just big enough after I, I cut the edge off. Uh, it's actually kind of beat up. You'll see that later in the video, but because it's covered by the box, it, it just doesn't matter. Uh, I did. Uh, I didn't really round over the edge. I took the uh, I took the edge off a little bit just to make it look finished. Uh, but it is it is just the perfect size. Uh, it probably could have been slightly bigger, but I didn't want this thing to be seen. My neighbor has it kind of on his on his uh, like the patio area of his dock, and I mean it's right there for everybody to see. And I just didn't want it to be an eyesore. I wanted it to be as far away as possible. So anyway, once you uh, figure out how you're going to mount it, uh, in this part here I just drilled all the holes. I'm going to skip the rest of this uh, in order to uh, through bolt it, nuts and bolts, uh, to that piece of starboard. So you'll see that in a minute. I always like to uh, you know, fasten it. I didn't have any clamps out here by the dock. Uh, so best is either to just go ahead and put the screw through it or clamp it uh, but this way it doesn't move around and you know that you're getting those holes in the right spot especially when you're as tight as I am here uh, with the clearance on either side here's what it looks like from the side obviously there's gonna be a box there but uh, when you're down here it's just much less less much less to look at I think uh, that's what I'm gonna do notice that uh, you see it from this side um, and you can tell whether or not it's straight or not so see what I mean the bottom hangs out just a little bit so I'm just gonna tap it until it's uh, until it's straight that looks pretty straight so that's basically, you'll see it from this side as you're getting on the boat. There's some electrical on the other side there. I think that's the way to go. I'm using a uh, three inch screw that I'm drilling and I don't really need to countersink it because um, all that's gonna be covered. But uh, that's just two screws. It is very solid. I'm gonna put uh, two more in. I'm gonna space them just a little bit. Uh, to help with any side to side wobble, but it's not wobbling at all. What I did was put one screw on top, one screw on the bottom centered, and then I staggered the other ones to really give it some side to side rigidity and it's not going anywhere. Extremely tight on a uh, round pole. <laughs> So the wires are just safely, you know, the bulbs are safely in the water. The wires come right across here. Got the other three nuts and bolts, and I just hung one of them right there. So now I'm just going to uh, pivot it up, put the other ones on, and uh, tighten them down. And that'll be it. That is a way to do it alone. This would be way easier with another person but uh, possible alone. All right, mounted, put washers. I put washer on the inside here so that it doesn't uh, grind into the plastic. And then I put a washer on the back side here that's slightly larger just to help the starboard not to split. It'll for sure split here someday, but hopefully not for many, many years. Um, if you buy their starboard, it's cut much bigger, likely for that reason, so it doesn't split. 
uh, but I wanted mine, you can see I beveled both sides all the way around. I wanted mine to be uh, just really as small and unobvious as possible. Uh, this is what it looks like from down the dock. So, I mean, it's, it's there, right? There's no not seeing it, but it's in a place that uh, you'd never see it really uh, anywhere else. And then from the back side, it's just, you know, about an inch on each side. So I'm happy with where I put it. I'm gonna run those wires down the outside of the piling. Uh, but first, I'm gonna wrap them with their uh, protective rubber hose. All right, here's these, uh, I got a 15 footer and a 30 footer, I think. Yeah, 30, they label it for you. And I think I'm gonna just lay them out in the sun and let them warm up a little bit so they're not as, so they don't wanna coil up. And I've got the lights laid out into the yard. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, start start with the uh, banding here. So all you do is push the line, the wire, uh, down into the um, down into the uh, hose. They've cut a slice in it, and then you zip tie it. You know, every couple feet, every foot, whatever. I think they give you uh, one per foot. And because there's no way that I can run this hose around basically all of the underwater wire, I think that would be probably the most ideal situation. I'm just gonna run it from the top of the dock and then as far as it goes. And what that'll do is cover the most obvious place that people would fish. Nobody fishes here, so it'll, it'll help it when it comes down the piling and then it'll get it uh, down the middle of the dock here and then over and that's it that's as far as it'll go and I'm not gonna worry about it um, the rest of it will just lay on the uh, lay on the bottom I'm gonna cut these zip tie tabs off and then uh, put it in okay this was a total pain in the ass I had to put the boat in the water ran the wires right down the uh, piling and then right above the water line I put them uh, in the rubber tubes and then I put the uh, you know electrical connectors with stainless to the low water line it's low tide uh, just to keep them tucked in and then the hoses go up in between the dock and around and right over to uh, the first light and then on to the second light. I'm going to uh, wrap up these wires here, uh, but I can do that from the dock. Anyway, I think it looks fine. I can't see it. This is what it looks like from the uh, water side. And like you can see, the uh, black box is just right the perfect size. Hardly even notices it. Notice the uh, you know backer box, that backer plate. Anyway. Pretty much done. Tonight I will position the lights again and uh, consider it done. Here it is done from this side. The uh, GFI just hangs and plugged in and coiled up right here. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's actually very easy and like I said way better with uh, two people these are inch and a quarter if you're wondering half inch starboard and whatever this is uh, inch and a quarter gets the nut on there perfect with uh, two small washers I wanted to show you uh, this new development the lights have been in for about three days now. And I think you can see it. Yeah, see that? This is, we're in the daytime. And there are 
hundreds and hundreds of these little bait fish, tiny little minnow things. They're not even bait fish, they're tiny little minnows. And um, what you hear over here is these snapper eating. So I, uh, along with these lights, I've been feeding the fish. I got this uh, authentic gumball machine that I really like. It's full of fish food, fish pellets. Uh, every time we come out here, we just get a handful and throw them in the water. So that has been uh, collecting fish, but I've been doing that for, I don't know, almost a year, not quite, 10 months. These lights have only been in, see there's a snapper right there. These lights have only been in for three days. There's a snapper. The marine life here in the daytime is radically different than it's been uh, ever since. These, these tiny little fish are really the difference. Uh, what I think is happening is this light is attracting more and more fish into this area and then they just hang out all day I mean, they're tiny. How far are they going to travel? So for three days worth of light, I run them all night. Uh, we're getting more marine life just in three days. So I've been coming out every night and I feed the fish, but uh, uh, you'll see there's a progression here up to about 30 days. So about a month, uh, every single night. And this is probably about two or three days, maybe a week past uh, the last video during the daytime. And you can see I'm, get, I'm getting more and more snapper and catfish. Now, you know, whatever. Catfish I think are gonna be everywhere, but they are pretty neat. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to show you in this video is if you see that dark star uh, pattern, if the light isn't deep enough, you do get that and it's from the cage. It's just a shadow from the cage, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, but here are the uh, catfish friends. You can see one snapper in there. And I should say that, you know, like I mentioned in the video before this one, or the clip before this one, the um, snapper are, have always been here. I've been feeding them. Um, anyway, this is uh, a month in, and we have our first snook visitor. Um, pretty. Pretty, uh, pretty good sized juvenile snook, very active, uh, coming around. And you can just see how many of those little bait fish there are. It's just un incredible. Um, you know, this particular canal, sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's got debris in it, uh, sometimes it's cloudy. It all depends on really the weather and the tide. Uh, this happens to be a pretty clear night, but um, all it took was uh, 30 days, maybe, maybe just a little bit more than a than a month uh, to get this many uh, little fish uh, and our first snook and it's just so cool uh, if you're wondering about the cost it's about it really is about six bucks a month um, at the time I'm finally making this video I've had these in the water now for at least two months and so I've got two electric bills down and uh, again it's summer so the electric bill spiked because of the air conditioner but it's really, you don't even really notice it. Uh, six, six to eight bucks at the most difference. And that's running this thing dust till dawn uh, every single night. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna show you some pictures here at the end. I actually did decide to move these lights uh, after I realized that the deeper light was getting so much more fish than the shallow light. So originally I had put it all the way in the back of that flats boat. Uh, it, and that was just too deep. I mean, it didn't, it just didn't look right. I wasn't getting the effect that I wanted, uh, up around, you know, the boat, uh, because they do really do serve two purposes. One, of course, to attract fish, but the other you'll see in the pictures at the end is just beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful light up, up under the boats. Um, but uh, this snook just hung out uh, for a while. I found out that uh, the, the catfish come in earlier, the snapper are there all the time, uh, and sometimes the snook come in when it gets dark, but most of the time it's really around 9, 10 o'clock at night where the snook are really coming in. Um, since this video, we've gotten a few more snook in here, and it's just so neat. It's like your own little wild aquarium. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, you can see all the activity here is on this one light under the bigger boat. Here's how I uh, relocated them. Moved this one back a little bit. So it really lights up the whole area really good. It's still pretty early. But uh, this one here moved quite a bit further back. It used to be here. You can see the reflection of the boat. <laughs> Looks like a sunken boat, right? Anyway, moved it right centered under. So this is the effect you get. There we go. Isn't that cool? And you can see it from this side also. I was just fooling around with them, so no, f no fish around them, but you can see this one from right here really well. And uh, it's in a little bit deeper water. I had it way out here, but it was just too deep. It didn't really look right. And there's too much light from uh, that light on the end of the dock. That light on the end of the dock produces quite a bit of light, but these are the still images of what it looks like when um, the lights are on. And you can see it's not even super dark out yet. Uh, I just love it. I, we love this look. It's um, this nice, you know, green glow. It's nice to sit out there. It produces uh, quite a bit of light. And then the fish are just an added plus. Uh, here's a view standing in my neighbor's yard. And you can see uh, that light on the end of the dock produces a ton of light. Uh, but And then the phone, this is an iPhone, it actually makes it look brighter than it is. Uh, I'm sure you know that if you have an iPhone. Uh, but that green glow is just beautiful, and um, we couldn't be happier. So underwaterfishlights.com, check them out. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And as always, uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. It helps support the channel. And... Um, I really appreciate you, uh, you watching and your comments. I, I uh, reply to every single comment, so please leave a comment if you have one. Thanks a lot. See ya.